Hey folks, uh, trying something a little different today. Um, today we're going to look at how to go from, or how we go, I should say, from a primed miniature, in this case a Panzer III, uh, to a painted miniature using that uh, worn grey colour scheme that we worked out. Or worn, not warm, rather. You can kind of see how it looks like the, the paint over top of the Panzer Grey is flaking off and showing through. So we're going to take a look at how to do that today. Okay, so uh, once you've got your model built and primed, the uh, first step we're going to do today is apply some Vallejo model color dark sand to the model. I've already got some on my palette here. I had to grab some water because we've got to make sure that we thin it down just a little bit. Otherwise, it'll go on a bit gloopy and obscure some of the tank's details. So we put some on the palette. We're going to wet our brush a few times. And we're going to mix it in. And I don't know if this is how the pros do it. But this is how we usually do it. As you can see, I got a really old brush, so excuse that. Now, I like to separate the pieces, so in this case, the hull and the tank itself. And then I just start putting it on there. And we'll be back once it's done. Okay, it's been a few minutes since I got that base coat on. Uh, it's fairly dry, but it is still a bit streaky. So I'm just going to tidy it up with a second thin coat in a couple of spots. All right, now that that's dry, we're going to take a little bit of Vallejo Neutral Gray, put it on the palette. We're not going to uh, thin this one too much. So we don't need it to be all that thin on these, just because we're going to be using a sponge instead of a paintbrush. So I like to use a little bit of the spare sponge from the packaging foam that you get in blisters from Flames of War. And we're just going to tear off a little hunk of it. Uh, I'm going to use a slightly bigger piece from a different package. We're just going to tear it so that we get kind of a square shape or a rectangle. Something like that. Lots of little breaks in it. What we're going to do is we're going to dab it into the paint, wipe it off a bit, and dab it on some paper towel. And then we're going to tank the model. And then we're just going to, in spots of high wear on the vehicle, like on hatches, just kind of dab it on, like so. As you can see, that gives it kind of a warm, chipped paint look. We all on here. Hatches on both sides of the turret. And with this, you don't want to go too overboard and make your model look too dirty. Less is more. Just kind of pick out a few prominent spots where it makes sense for the chipping to be like, again, on the hatches. Front. Where crew members would step up on the tank. Stuff like that. Edges, engine deck covers. I sometimes go a little overboard because I really love the look. And then especially down in here, if you can, it's a little harder to get at. Sometimes you gotta go back for a little bit more paint. Don't worry about getting it on the treads and stuff. We're gonna paint over those with some black paint later. Yeah, there we go. And then just continue that on all the other tanks that you've got. Until you're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, as a next step, I'm going to hit all the tracks, the road wheels, the rubber parts, uh, and any tool bits that need it in a contrast black templar. This is probably the most time consuming aspect of doing this. Okay, now that the black uh, detailing is done, uh, I'm gonna hit the entire tank with a thin down uh, Agrax Earth Shade.
Uh, I've already thinned this the last time I used it, and I just thinned it in the bottle. It was mostly empty. That's why I thinned it so that I could get more out of it. I'm just going to take my large shade brush and dip straight into the pot. I'm not too worried about getting a little bit too much, and I'm just going to apply it directly onto the tank. Okay, now that the wash is dry, we're going to hit the metal bits of the tools with a little bit of Iron Warriors, and then we're going to move on to dry brushing. Now, a lot of times you'll see, especially on these ones, actually, you can see it where the wash is kind of pooling a bit, um, specifically in this instance, uh, along the top of the turret and on these parts here. Um, you can go and touch them back up with uh, a little bit of your base color if you really want to. I'm not going to only because I'm going to do a really heavy dry brush of the desert tan that we're going to use, or the, the buff, sorry, that we're going to use. And I find that it actually does clean it up quite nicely that way and gives it a little bit more definition underneath the weathering. That's just my personal preference. Um, it's totally up to you how you wish to approach it. And yes, I'm using a chair out of the pot because I give no cares right now. I'm just, I, like I said, I'm just really barely doing anything. I'm just touching up some of the tool bits, make them look metal. Okay, so the last step we're going to do is a heavy dry brush of model color buff. And that's going to simulate the dust and sand effect on the tanks. So we're going to throw some down on the palette here. Close that up. Completely hide it with our paint so you can see which ones we're using in the background there. We're going to dab our brush in the paint. Get some of the paint on the brush. We're going to wipe it off a bit. And then we're just going to go to town rubbing it in here. So passing it over the model so it catches on the raised areas of the model leaving the recesses with the color. It's like the reverse of a wash, obviously. And this just, at least to me, and I'm sure everyone else will say it, but it does create the impression of dust sitting on top of the tank. And you can go as heavy or as light as you want. I like mine to be pretty heavy, just because I like the look of a super dirty tank, one that's been in the field for quite a while. But of course you don't want to go too heavy and obscure all of your hard work underneath. So just uh, go lightly at first, take stock every couple of steps that you do, make sure you like where it's looking, and yeah, simple as that. So we'll be right back once we're done. All right, and there we go. That is three more tanks done up in the camera scheme that we mentioned. So this was the first with the worn gray. And we got another up, uh, well this one's an up armored long five centimeter. Second up armored long five centimeter. And this one I actually halfway through decided I needed for Sicily instead. So I gave it a green and tan camel job. This is our up server hands three. So I hope you find this tutorial at least somewhat helpful. Um, and not too hard to watch. First time trying the film of painting tutorial. So uh, let us know if you like it down below, if you want to see more. Uh, and if there's anything specific that we've painted that you want to see, just again, let us know down below. Hope you guys have a great day. Keep sticks on the ice. Bye now.